On this episode, InCycle are back at the tour, bringing you all the alternative behind-the-scenes stories from the last week. In the final week, the lead-out talk hotel reviews with Magnus Court, Joey Roscoff receives a special delivery on the Col du Galibier, the Lantern Rouge goes to Sebastian Langefeld, but first, Alexander Christoph's DJ alter ego. Alex, who is DJ Polar Bear? Yeah, I, I think maybe the name is taken already, but uh, yeah, I was uh, planning if I get a DJ career sometimes, so that would be my name, but maybe I had to change it to Ice Bear, like it's the Norwegian name of Polar Bear, but uh, we will see. How much DJing have you done? Very little, I was too tired, so uh, I was thinking this month I have a lot of time, but actually I'm so dead and my crea creativity went really down, so hasn't been much working on that, unfortunately. The other riders been hearing the stuff? Yeah, I tried it one time, but it was uh, more negative uh, feedback than positive. Magnus, you've been turning your hand to being a hotel reviewer as well as a pro cyclist here. Yeah, I have. Uh, yes, an idea I got uh, last year. Uh, the team were really pushing for me to do uh, some more social media, and I didn't really feel that the normal stuff would, would bring anything good to the world. But then I thought uh, I can review the hotels and just show the world how it is. And you're doing a star rating out of seven, is that right? What gets a hotel an extra star and what takes a star away? What are the key things you're looking for? I would say if everything is good, it's a six. And then to get the last seven star, then it has to be like special, like super nice, uh, really big room. Um, and then uh, as soon as they start having mistakes in my book there's no air conditioning the internet is not working it's not enough uh, space for, for opening your suitcase stuff like that and uh, then they're losing a star every time joey normally on a mountain stage eating drinking very important what what were you eating you got something very special at one point i did i got a waffle hand up on the last last climb Actually, I kept it in my pocket until I, I got to the finish because it was just a 15K downhill to the finish line. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my girlfriend was there on the on the last climb. So always a boost of energy to see someone like that so, so deep into a hard stage. And she was very proficient at handing it over. You must have known she was there or? Uh, I knew she would be somewhere on the climb. I didn't know she had anything to hand up or whatever. I was surprised. <laughs> I was just reaching out to say hey. Um, but then she, she stuck a waffle in my hand and I grabbed it. It was pretty, it looked efficient. It looked, it looked planned, but no, it, it wasn't. It was just a funny moment. Sebastian, you're the Lantern Rouge for this tour. Were you going for it? Were you aware that you were near the bottom of it? Um, no, I wasn't really going for it, uh, but like Paris was coming closer and there were a couple of other, other riders who were saying, yeah, are you riding for it or not? And uh, to be honest, I didn't. I had a pretty bad crash uh, midway the tour, so I struggled a, a lot with that. So sometimes it was just finishing off a stage with less energy as possible. But uh, yeah, you, you get quite a bit of uh, publicity with it. <laughs> and how satisfying is it to have had that crash and to have got to Paris now? I started off pretty good in, uh, in the tour. And that crash was two days before the time trial. And uh, I had quite a bit of injuries. But uh, I'm happy to be here and happy to be in uh, Paris. And uh, I will enjoy this day. It's, it's my sixth tour. And uh, it's always special to, uh, to finish on the Champs-Élysées. 